In the silent void of space, the starship Intrepid cuts a solitary path, its sleek, dark hull almost invisible against the backdrop of the star-strewn galaxy. Aboard this formidable vessel, General Shythra, the esteemed military leader of the Zorvaxian Empire, stands gazing through the command deck's panoramic viewing port. His mission is clear yet complex, to covertly assess the military capabilities of the remote and unassuming Terran Colony III. The Zorvaxians, a species known for their military might and strategic cunning, have long viewed the expansion of human territories with a mix of disdain and curiosity. The Empire's leaders have dismissed humans as primitive and disorganized, but recent skirmishes on the frontier have hinted at a potential that the Zorvaxian High Command finds unnervingly impressive. As the intrepid approaches the colony, Jathra's thoughts are a turbulent mix of official duty and a personal quest for understanding. His career, marked by unchallenged victories and rigid adherence to the Empire's doctrine, has never before brought him face to face with humans in a context that wasn't outright hostile. The colony itself orbits a vibrant blue planet, its surface swirling with white clouds. It's smaller than most Zorvaxian outposts, yet scans indicate sophisticated defensive systems and a bustling population. The human architectural style is a stark contrast to Zorvaxian designs, favoring modular construction and adaptability over the monolithic and imposing structures of his people. Preparing for his first direct encounter, Jithra orders his crew to initiate contact protocols. A communication link is established and he's soon facing a human military officer on the screen. Captain Lisa Harrow, with her sharp gaze and calm demeanor, represents the human forces stationed at the colony. She is polite yet cautious, embodying the resilience and diplomacy that humans are reputed for. Jithra introduces himself with a carefully neutral tone, aware of the delicate nature of first impressions. I am General Shithra of the Zorvaxian Empire. I come in peace with hopes to observe and learn. Captain Harrow nods, understanding the implications of a visit from such a high-ranking official. General, your arrival was unexpected, but we're honored to host you. Let us show you what humanity can offer in terms of peace and partnership. As General Shithra disembarks from the Intrepid, flanked by his entourage of aides and security personnel, the atmosphere on the docking platform of Terran Colony 3 is charged with a palpable tension and curiosity. Both Zorvaxian and human forces eye each other warily, their mutual apprehension underscored by a respectful distance. Captain Lisa Harrow steps forward, her hand extended in a gesture of peace that Jithra recognizes from his briefings. Welcome to Terran Colony 3, General, she says, her voice steady and welcoming. We've prepared a series of demonstrations to showcase our capabilities and the principles we stand for. General Kshithra accepts her handshake, the contact bridging not just the physical distance, but also an ocean of cultural and historical suspicion. Thank you, Captain Harrow. I am keen to understand more about your people. The first demonstration is a surprising one. Instead of showcasing lethal weaponry or aggressive tactics, the humans present a sophisticated defense drill. The colony's defenses spring to life, not with the roar of cannons, but with the activation of advanced shield technologies and an impressive array of non-lethal deterrents. Drones weave through the air in intricate patterns, painting a picture of a society that values precision and innovation over brute force. This is our Aegis shield system, explains Captain Harrow, pointing towards the shimmering barriers that flicker into visibility around key structures. It's designed to protect without destroying. Our philosophy is to preserve life where possible. Shaithra watches, his sharp eyes missing nothing. The display is unlike anything in the Zorvaxian arsenal, which favors overwhelming power and swift conquest. The human approach, with its emphasis on protection and sustainability, forces him to reconsider the stereotype of humans as merely primitive and chaotic. The tour continues with a visit to the colony's command center a hub bustling with activity yet marked by an orderly flow that speaks to a well-organized military structure. Jithra is shown the latest in human communication and surveillance technology, including real-time interstellar data feeds that keep the colony leaders informed of any celestial and terrestrial threats. We value information and foresight, 
Captain Harrow explains as they observe the operations. Understanding the environment and potential adversaries allows us to make informed decisions that avoid unnecessary conflicts. As the day progresses, Shithra's initial skepticism gives way to a grudging respect. Each demonstration reveals layers of strategic depth and technological advancement that he had not anticipated. The final event of the day is a simulated rescue operation, highlighting the human military's commitment to saving lives, even under fire. Watching a team of soldiers extract civilians from a staged disaster area, Jaithra feels a stir of admiration. These soldiers, so different in form and philosophy from his own, embody a courage and dedication that resonate with him more than he expects. As the sun sets over Terran Colony 3, casting long shadows across the landing pads and barracks, General Shithra finds himself pondering the forthcoming nights. His mission had been to observe and report back, but now he senses that what he has seen today could redefine his understanding of not just humanity, but of what it means to be a soldier, a leader, and a guardian of peace. The night after the demonstrations, General Jithra finds himself unable to sleep. The quarters provided to him on Terran Colony 3 are comfortable, yet foreign. The soft hum of the human-made environment is a stark contrast to the silent, efficient stillness he is used to on Zorvaxian ships. As he lies awake, his mind churns with thoughts provoked by the day's events. The humans had displayed not only their technological prowess, but also a strategic depth that emphasized preservation and defense over conquest and destruction. This philosophy was far removed from the Zorvaxian doctrine of dominance and control which viewed all interactions through the lens of potential threat and exploitation. Shaithra rises from his bed and moves to the window, looking out over the colony bathed in the pale light of the colony's artificial day-night cycle. He reflects on his long career, during which he had led numerous campaigns expanding the Empire's reach across star systems, often through force and intimidation. The notion that strength could be shown through restraint rather than aggression, is a revolutionary one to him. Pulling up data on his personal device, Shaithra reviews reports of recent skirmishes along the Zorvaxian border, now seeing them through a new lens. Were there alternatives to the battles they had chosen to fight? Could conflicts have been averted through diplomacy and a better understanding of the other side, as the humans seem to strive for? His thoughts are interrupted by a quiet chime at his door. It's Captain Harrow, who appears with a slight hesitation, sensing the late hour might not be ideal for a visit. General, I hope I'm not intruding. I thought you might appreciate some insights into our cultural philosophy, she offers, holding a data tablet loaded with articles and historical documents about Earth's journey toward its current ethos. Gratefully accepting the tablet, Jaithra gestures for her to join him. They spend the next hours discussing Earth's history its wars, its mistakes, and its pivotal moments of change towards a society that values life and peace over domination. This philosophy, it's not born out of weakness, but a choice, isn't it? Kshithra muses aloud, the pieces coming together in his mind. Exactly, Captain Harrow nods. It's a choice to learn from our past, to build resilience not through fear, but through cooperation and mutual respect. As Harrow departs, leaving Shaithra to his thoughts and the documents she provided, the general feels a profound shift within him. He spends the rest of the night reading about Earth's United Nations, its peacekeeping missions, and its international treaties, all concepts alien to the Zorvaxian way of ruling through might. By the time dawn approaches, Shaithra feels a burgeoning conflict within his soul. His loyalty to the Empire wars with his newfound respect for the human approach. The idea that there might be a better way to lead, to protect, and to interact with other civilizations stirs a rebellious spark in him. Could he continue to serve an empire whose methods now seemed so starkly primitive compared to what he had witnessed? Or was it time to rethink his role, not just as a general of an imperial force, but as a leader who could bridge worlds and ideologies? These questions haunted him, setting the stage for a decision that could alter his life and potentially the fate of the galaxy. 
General Shithra's internal turmoil grew as the night faded into the stark light of dawn over Terran Colony 3. The articles and historical reflections Captain Harrow had provided left a profound impact on him, stirring a rebellion against everything he once upheld without question. The weight of his role, once a badge of honor, now felt like shackles binding him to outdated ideals. As he watched the colony awaken, Shithra made a decision that felt both terrifying and exhilarating. He could no longer in good conscience lead his troops in a campaign against these people, not when he had seen the possibility of a different path, one of peace and mutual respect. Preparing quietly, Shathra composed a message to his superiors, informing them of his resignation, citing personal reasons without revealing his true intent. He knew the Empire would view his defection as treason, punishable by the harshest measures, but the conviction that he was making the right choice fortified his resolve. He packed minimal belongings, leaving behind anything that tied him too closely to the Zorvaxian Empire, and erased all data from his personal devices that could jeopardize his new allies. Before the colony stirred to full life, he made his way to a less monitored docking bay where small cargo ships frequently came and went without much scrutiny. Using his high-level security access for perhaps the last time, Jithra commandeered a small, unassuming craft, the Vortex Rider. It was a maintenance vessel, hardly a ship befitting a general, but it was fast and had a cloaking device, perfect for a discreet escape. As the Vortex Rider detached from the colony, Jithra felt a strange sense of freedom. The stars before him no longer represented territories to conquer, but destinations of potential friendship and alliance. However, freedom came with immediate peril. It wasn't long before the first alerts of his unauthorized departure blared across the colony's communication channels. The Zorvaxian Empire, with its extensive surveillance and military might, quickly realized the gravity of Shithra's disappearance. Assassins, loyal to the Imperial Doctrine, and a fleet tasked with retrieving or eliminating the defector, were dispatched. His knowledge of military strategies and insider information made him an invaluable asset, or a dangerous liability. Navigating through lesser-known hyperspace routes and relying on the stealth capabilities of the Vortex Rider, Shithra evaded several close encounters with Zorvaxian patrols. Each jump through hyperspace was a calculated risk, but his intimate knowledge of Zorvaxian tactics gave him an edge. His immediate goal was to reach Earth, a planet that symbolized his newfound ideals. He knew that seeking asylum there was a risk. The Earth might view him with suspicion, a high-ranking enemy officer turning up at their doorstep. Yet he hoped the evidence of his defection and the sincerity of his intentions would speak for themselves. As General Shithra's ship, the Vortex Rider dashed through the cosmos towards Earth, his defection sent ripples through the Zorvaxian Empire. The news of his betrayal reached the highest echelons of the military, sparking outrage and a swift call to action. Shithra, once a decorated general, was now the Empire's most wanted. Back on Terran Colony 3, the absence of the general was discovered during the routine morning check-ins. The security team scrambled to trace his last movements, uncovering the stolen maintenance vessel's flight path. Admiral Crax, a longtime rival of Jithra and a staunch advocate for the Empire's expansionist policies, took charge of the manhunt. Deploy the Seeker drones and alert the fleet. Set course to intercept the traitor. He must not reach Earth, Admiral Crax commanded, his voice echoing with authority and a tinge of personal vendetta. The implications of a high-ranking general defecting to Earth could not be understated. It posed a significant threat to the strategic positioning of the Zorvaxian military and their plans for expansion. Meanwhile, Shithra piloted the Vortex Rider with a masterful understanding of space navigation, evading the most commonly monitored hyperspace routes. His knowledge of Zorvaxian tactics and patrol patterns allowed him to stay one step ahead, but he knew it was only a matter of time before they would adjust and close in on his trajectory. As he neared a nebula that would temporarily mask his ship's energy signature, Jithra received the first ping of a seeker drone on his tail. It was designed for relentless pursuit, equipped with tracking algorithms that could adapt and predict the escape routes of their targets. Engaging the cloaking device, 
Shythra steered the vortex rider into the colorful mists of the nebula, hoping to lose his pursuers in its dense, turbulent gases. Inside the nebula, sensor visibility was poor, and the familiar stars were obscured by brilliant clouds of ionized gas. Shythra used this to his advantage, laying false trails and doubling back on his path. Each maneuver was calculated to extend the life of his cloaking device and conserve energy, crucial for the final leg of his journey to Earth. Back at the Zorvaxian Command Center, Admiral Crax watched with growing frustration as the signal from the Seeker drone flickered and was lost in the nebula. Increase power to the drones. Send more if you have to. I want that traitor found, he ordered, unwilling to let Sheathra slip through his fingers. After what felt like an eternity weaving through the nebula, Jythra emerged on the other side, his sensors alert for any sign of pursuit. He breathed a sigh of relief as he realized he had successfully evaded the Seeker drones, at least for now. But the general knew his journey was far from over. The final approach to Earth would be the most dangerous part, as he would need to navigate through solar systems more heavily monitored by both Zorvaxian and human technologies. With the Empire likely notifying Earth of his supposed crimes, convincing humanity of his sincere defection and not a strategic deception would be his next great challenge. The Vortex Rider, piloted by the fugitive General Shythra, finally breached the outer perimeter of Earth's defense systems. His arrival did not go unnoticed. Earth's advanced early warning satellites detected the unidentified craft as it approached. However, the cloak was still holding giving Shithra a narrow window of stealth as he maneuvered closer to the planet. Meanwhile, Earth's military command was on high alert. Reports from Terran Colony 3 about a high-ranking Zorvaxian defector had reached them, but skepticism remained high. The idea that a general of the Zorvaxian Empire would defect, and alone at that, seemed almost too good to be true, possibly a ruse or a trap. As Shithra entered Earth's atmosphere, he disengaged the cloaking device, knowing well that to continue using it would only raise more suspicions and could be perceived as a hostile action. He transmitted a standard surrender signal and awaited contact, fully aware that the next few moments would determine his fate. On Earth, the response was swift. A squadron of intercept fighters quickly surrounded the Vortex Rider, escorting it to a designated landing area in the sprawling, fortified city of New Geneva. The city was not just a major military hub, it was also a symbol of Earth's resilience and technological prowess. General Shithra was met with a mixture of curiosity and hostility as he disembarked. Armed soldiers surrounded him, their weapons trained but not yet threatening. He was escorted immediately to a secure facility for debriefing. I am General Shithra, he announced upon arrival, speaking through a translation device. I come seeking asylum and peace. I no longer serve the Zorvaxian Empire. His words were met with skepticism. Major Sarah Klein, the head of Earth's Alien Relations Division, was among the first to interrogate him. You expect us to believe that a general of your rank simply walks away from the Zorvaxian military? What are your real intentions here, General? Shithra understood her doubts. I can provide intelligence, strategies, and proof of my defection he replied calmly. I've seen the potential for a different path, one that your people embody. I no longer wish to be part of a system that thrives on conquest and subjugation. Over several hours, Shithra shared detailed accounts of Zorvaxian strategies, upcoming plans, and even personal log entries that chronicled his growing disillusionment with the Empire's doctrines. His openness gradually wore down the initial distrust. Simultaneously, Earth's intelligence services worked to verify his information, finding consistency and valuable insights in his accounts. As the verification process continued, Shithra was moved to a more comfortable holding area, reflecting his cooperative stance and the decreasing perception of him as a threat. Days turned into weeks as diplomatic channels buzzed with activity. Earth's leaders debated the potential benefits and risks of granting asylum to Jithra. Meanwhile, news of his defection sparked debates among other Zorvaxian commanders and soldiers, some of whom began questioning their own roles in the Empire's aggressive expansion. Finally, 
a decision was reached. Earth would grant asylum to Jaithra, not only as a gesture of goodwill, but also as a strategic move to bolster their defenses with his knowledge and insights. In return, Igaithra pledged his loyalty to Earth, offering to serve as a bridge between human and Zorvaxian cultures, hoping to foster understanding and perhaps, one day, peace. General Shithra's transition from a high-ranking Zorvaxian defector to an advisor on Earth was marked by both suspicion and strategic necessity. His detailed insights into Zorvaxian military tactics and their imperial ambitions proved invaluable, especially as Earth braced for possible retaliation. As part of his integration and to capitalize on his expertise, Earth's military leadership invited Jithra to join the Global War Council, a group comprised of top military strategists and political leaders. The council convened in a secure underground facility in New Geneva, designed to withstand any form of attack, a testament to Earth's preparedness. The room buzzed with a tense energy as Shithra entered, escorted by Major Sarah Klein, who had become his primary liaison and, unexpectedly, his advocate. Ladies and gentlemen, Major Klein began, this is General Jaithra, whose defection has provided us with critical intelligence. Today he joins us not as an enemy but as an ally against a common threat. Shithra took his place at the table, feeling the weight of many skeptical gazes upon him. He understood their reservations. Here he was, a former enemy, now part of their inner circle. The transition had been swift, born out of necessity, and he was keenly aware of the need to prove himself. The Council's agenda was heavy and urgent with discussions ranging from fortifying Earth's defenses to establishing diplomatic channels with other potentially sympathetic Zorvaxian factions. Shathra listened intently, gauging the mood and the Council's strategic priorities. When his turn came to speak, Shathra stood, his voice steady and clear. I know that my presence here is not without controversy. However, I am committed to your cause. The Zorvaxian Empire, as it stands, seeks domination but many of us within its ranks desire peace. We are tired of endless conquest. He laid out the Zorvaxian military's likely strategies for an assault on Earth, suggesting countermeasures that leveraged Earth's technological advancements and the element of surprise. His proposal included the use of decoy fleets, cyber attacks to disrupt enemy communications, and guerrilla tactics that could exploit the Zorvaxians' overconfidence in their firepower. Captain Lisa Harrow, now a prominent figure in Earth's Space Force, raised strategic questions about the deployment of Earth's fleets and the integration of Jaithra's tactics with their existing protocols. Her critical but open-minded approach helped bridge gaps between Jaithra's suggestions and Earth's capabilities. The session grew intense as they simulated various scenarios, each member contributing their expertise, with Jaithra's insights often guiding the discussions to deeper strategic layers. His knowledge of Zorvaxian weaknesses and psychology added a dimension that Earth's strategists had previously lacked. As the meeting drew to a close, a consensus had formed. Jaithra's strategies would be integrated into Earth's defense plans. Furthermore, he would help train special units in Zorvaxian combat techniques and help oversee the deployment of new defensive systems. Walking out of the War Council, Jaithra felt a burgeoning sense of belonging. The initial distrust was slowly melting away, replaced by a cautious respect. He knew the road ahead would be fraught with challenges, both military and diplomatic. But for the first time since his defection, he felt he was exactly where he needed to be. The integration of General Shithra into Earth's military framework was a multifaceted process involving not just strategic planning, but also ground-level training and coordination with Earth's soldiers. Recognizing the need for a hands-on approach, Jaithra began to participate actively in the training sessions of Earth's elite units, focusing on preparing them for the potential nuances of combat against Zorvaxian forces. On the training grounds outside New Geneva, Jaithra met with Captain Lisa Harrow and Lieutenant Raj Patel, both key figures in the Earth Defense Force and his primary liaisons with the human troops. The air was crisp, and the gravity of Earth, slightly lighter than Zorvax, lent a different feel to his movements, an almost buoyant quality that he was learning to adapt to. General Shithra, today's focus will be on urban warfare and counter-sabotage tactics. 
Captain Harrow briefed, her tone professional but warm. They stood overlooking a mock urban setup, designed to simulate a dense cityscape, where Zorvaxian tactics could be effectively demonstrated and countered. As the soldiers assembled, Jithra took a moment to address them, his voice amplified and translated. I am here not just to teach, but to learn. Our enemy is formidable, but together we are stronger. Let us share knowledge and forge our defenses not just in steel, but in solidarity. The training began with Hakshithra demonstrating a typical Zorvaxian assault technique, fast, overwhelming, and heavily reliant on shock tactics. Lieutenant Patel, agile and quick-thinking, adapted quickly, directing his squad to employ diversionary tactics that Shithra had suggested, effectively dispersing the mock enemy's focus. Throughout the session, Shithra was deeply involved, correcting stances, demonstrating the use of standard Zorvaxian weapons, and sharing insights into their battle psychology. His commitment to Earth's cause grew palpable, and the troops, initially skeptical of the alien general, began to respond with respect and eagerness to learn. As the days turned into weeks, bonds formed not just from shared knowledge, but through the shared trials of grueling training schedules and strategy sessions that often stretched late into the night. Captain Harrow and Lieutenant Patel in particular found a mentor in Shaitra, appreciating his straightforward approach and his increasingly evident respect for human capabilities and resilience. During a particularly intense training session under simulated battle conditions, an accident occurred. A misfired drone headed straight for a group of soldiers. Without hesitation, Shithra used his own body to shield a young recruit, absorbing the impact with his tougher, alien physiology. The incident, while minor, cemented his standing among the troops. He wasn't just an advisor, he was a comrade willing to put himself at risk for others. Off the field, Jaithra spent time with the soldiers in less formal settings, sharing meals and, on occasion, tales of Zorvaxian cultures and his own experiences. These interactions, filled with laughter and an exchange of stories, helped break down the last remnants of any lingering distrust. The tension on Earth reached a crescendo as intelligence reports confirmed the worst fears. The Zorvaxian armada, vast and relentless, had entered the solar system. Its target was unmistakable, Earth itself. This was not just a punitive expedition. It was an all-out invasion intended to crush humanity's spirit and recapture the defector who dared defy the Empire. Under the dark shadow of the approaching fleet, General Shaithra stood alongside Earth's leaders and his comrades in arms, Captain Lisa Harrow and Lieutenant Raj Patel. They gathered in the war room, a buzz of strategic discourse filling the space as they finalized their defenses. Ishaithra's previous contributions to Earth's military strategies were now to be tested on a scale none could have fully anticipated. Remember, they will expect us to be intimidated, to falter, Ishaithra advised, his voice steady despite the palpable tension. We must use that to our advantage. Surprise and unpredictability will be our allies. As the Zorvaxian ships began their descent into Earth's orbit, a network of satellites and defense stations sprang to life. Earth's response was swift and coordinated, a testament to the months of preparation and shared training. The first salvo from Earth's quantum cannons lit up the space around the planet, creating a dazzling display of defensive prowess. In space, the battle grew intense. Human pilots, trained under Ashaithra's tutelage, executed complex maneuvers that bewildered the Zorvaxian pilots, used to more straightforward combat scenarios. The Zorvaxians had not anticipated such resistance, and their initial overconfidence began to waver. On the ground, in the command center, Jithra and Captain Harrow monitored the progress of the space battle, while Lieutenant Patel coordinated ground forces prepared to defend against any landings. The Global Defense Network, a mesh of AI-driven response units and human command, functioned with seamless precision. General, we've identified the flagship of their armada. It's vulnerable from the starboard due to its shielding malfunction, one of the tech operators announced, pointing to a live feed on the main screen. Seizing the moment, Shaithra quickly devised a plan. Deploy the stealth squadron. Target that weakness. This could shift the entire battle in our favor. The stealth squadron, 
a fleet of small, agile ships equipped with cloaking technology and enhanced firepower, darted through the chaos of battle. Their attack was precise, exploiting the revealed vulnerability with a series of coordinated strikes. The flagship, critical to the Zorvaxian command structure, suffered catastrophic damage, its downfall causing confusion and disarray within the enemy ranks. As the flagship went down in a blaze of fire and debris, the morale of the Zorvaxian forces plummeted, their orderly formations breaking apart. Earth's forces, energized by the turn of events, pressed their advantage. The skies above Earth erupted with the light of victory as one by one, the Zorvaxian ships began to retreat. In the war room, cheers erupted among the human commanders and soldiers, a chorus of relief and triumph. Shithra, however, remained focused, his gaze fixed on the screens displaying the battlefield. This is a significant victory, he acknowledged, turning to Harrow and Patel. But it is not the end. We must prepare for their next move. This battle showed them we are not as they presumed. They will not underestimate us again. As Earth celebrated this unexpected victory, Shythra's thoughts were already moving towards the future. He knew that true peace was still a distant dream, and the road to it would be fraught with further challenges. Yet, this victory had proved that together, humanity and its once enemy could face formidable odds. This battle might just be the turning point not only in the war, but in forging a new path for interstellar relations, with Earth at the heart of a new alliance. Following the unexpected victory in space, Earth's defenses remained on high alert, anticipating further retaliation. The Zorvaxian Empire, stung by their defeat, was not likely to withdraw completely without another attempt to assert their dominance. This time, their focus shifted from a broad assault to a targeted strike. The city of New Geneva, the heart of Earth's military command and the symbol of its resilient defense. General Sheethra, alongside Captain Lisa Harrow and Lieutenant Raj Patel, prepared for what they anticipated would be a fierce ground assault. The city's defenses had been fortified under Shithra's guidance, with anti-aircraft systems and energy shields upgraded to counter the advanced weaponry of the Zorvaxians. As the Zorvaxian dropships entered the atmosphere, the skies over New Geneva darkened with the shadow of the impending siege. Civilians had been evacuated to underground shelters, leaving the streets deserted except for military units positioned strategically throughout the city. Their first wave will try to disable our communications, Shythra predicted, his voice calm over the communications network linking all units. Stay sharp and keep the anti-jamming protocols running. The first clash was intense, with Zorvaxian shock troops landing in the outskirts and attempting to penetrate the city's defenses. Earth's forces, however, were prepared. Utilizing guerrilla tactics, they managed to isolate and neutralize the enemy squads one by one preventing them from regrouping. In the heart of the city, Shythra coordinated the defense from a mobile command center, moving from one hot spot to another. His presence on the ground, directing troops and making tactical decisions in real time, was inspiring to the human soldiers, who fought with renewed vigor, knowing their alien ally was sharing the danger. Captain Harrow led a squadron in a daring counteroffensive, pushing back against a Zorvaxian battalion that had managed to breach the first line of defense. Using a series of improvised explosive devices and remote-controlled drones, her team created a blockade, funneling the invaders into a kill zone where they could be dealt with effectively. Lieutenant Patel, meanwhile, was in charge of the city's aerial defense, coordinating with pilot squads to intercept enemy dropships before they could release their troops. His adept handling of the aerial units thwarted several attempts by the Zorvaxians to establish a foothold within the city limits. As the battle raged, a critical moment arrived when a Zorvaxian command unit managed to disable part of the city's energy shield, creating a vulnerability. Recognizing the danger, Shythra personally led a rapid response team to the breach. In a fierce confrontation, they not only repelled the invaders, but also managed to capture a Zorvaxian commander. The interrogation of the captured commander revealed a planned second wave, larger and potentially more devastating. Armed with this knowledge, Shythra quickly adapted the city's defensive strategy, setting up multiple layers of traps and defenses tailored to the expected tactics of the next assault. 
The second wave hit with the predicted ferocity, but thanks to the preparations, New Geneva held strong. The invaders found themselves mired in a maze of defensive measures, each step forward costing them dearly. As the siege wore on, the resolve of the Zorvaxian forces began to waver. Reports of falling morale and increasing dissent among their ranks reached Jithra, confirming that the tide of the battle was turning in favor of Earth. Finally, after hours of intense combat, the Zorvaxians retreated, their forces depleted and their spirit broken. New Geneva stood firm, its defenses scarred but unbroken. The victory was celebrated not just as a triumph in battle, but as a testament to the strength of the alliance between Earth and its former foe, now its staunchest defender. Shithra, once an alien general, had proven himself a true hero of Earth, and in the fires of the siege, a new chapter of interstellar relations was forged, one based on mutual respect and shared courage. In the aftermath of the siege of New Geneva, the dust settled on the scarred but intact city. Earth's victory was more than a military success. It was a profound statement of resilience and unity. However, the battle was far from over. General Shithra, now fully regarded as a hero among Earth's forces, knew that the Zorvaxian Empire would not easily give up their claim. Yet what transpired next was something he had not anticipated, an unexpected confrontation that would challenge his convictions to their core. A secret communication came through to Jithra's personal device late one evening, encrypted in a manner typical of high-level Zorvaxian command. The message was from General Kivok, his old mentor and a revered figure in the Zorvaxian military. Kivok requested a meeting on neutral ground, claiming to have urgent information that could not be shared over any communicable channels. With the approval of Earth's military leaders, Jithra agreed to the meeting which was to take place on a deserted moon orbiting Jupiter. The barren landscape served as a stark backdrop for the reunion of the two generals, each now standing on opposite sides of a widening gulf. As they faced each other, the air heavy with unspoken tension, Kivok's expression was one of sorrow mixed with resolve. Shithra, you have caused great upheaval, he began, his voice betraying a hint of emotional strain. Why turn against your own people? Shithra's response was firm, his decision long since made. I did not turn against our people, Kivok. I turned against a policy of conquest that I no longer believe in. Earth has shown me that there is strength in peace and honor in diplomacy. Kivok shook his head, a gesture of disappointment. I have come to tell you that the High Command is preparing another attack, one that will not stop at Earth but will continue until all human resistance is crushed. They see your defection not just as betrayal, but as a challenge to our very way of life. But there is more, Kivok continued, pausing as if weighing the cost of his next words. There are others within the High Command who now doubt our course. Your actions have sparked a debate, one that could change the Empire's direction. This revelation struck Shithra with both hope and a heavy burden. Then there is a chance for peace, Kivok. Help me to bring this message to Earth. Help me show our people a better path. Kivok was silent for a long moment, his gaze lost in the starlit sky of the Jovian moon. Finally, he looked back at Shithra, resolve hardening in his eyes. I cannot join you, Shithra. My duty is to the Empire as yours once was, but I will not interfere with your mission. Go and do what you must. With a solemn nod, Shithra turned to leave, pausing to add, I hope one day you will see that peace is worth fighting for not just conquest. Returning to Earth, Shithra brought news of the impending attack and the potential for division within the Zorvaxian ranks. His report spurred Earth's leaders into action, hastening preparations for defense and opening new dialogues about forging alliances with those Zorvaxians who desired change. As the threat of another Zorvaxian attack loomed large, Earth's global defense network, bolstered by General Jithra's strategic insights, and the tentative support of like-minded Zorvaxian factions, prepared for what many believed would be a defining battle in the history of both Earth and the Zorvaxian Empire. The Zorvaxian forces, now somewhat divided by internal debates and the stirring impact of Shithra's defection, approached Earth with a plan that was more cautious than their previous full-scale assault. This hesitation, seeded by Shithra's revelation and his subsequent diplomatic efforts, 
gave Earth an unforeseen advantage. Earth's defenses were activated at full capacity, with every satellite, every drone, every soldier ready. Shaithra, working closely with Captain Lisa Harrow and Lieutenant Raj Patel, coordinated the planet's response from a command center in New Geneva. The city had become a symbol of Earth's indomitable spirit and strategic brilliance. As the Zorvaxian fleet approached, a series of diplomatic communications initiated by Jaithra reached several of their ships. These messages, filled with pleas for peace and reminders of the unnecessary bloodshed that would follow, caused noticeable delays and confusion in the Zorvaxian ranks. Some ships hesitated, others pulled back slightly, unsure of their course. The battle began with a fierce exchange of fire in Earth's orbit. Human pilots, now adept at combating Zorvaxian tactics, used guerrilla strategies that Sheathra had taught them. They targeted the invaders' key ships, those which seemed hesitant, deepening the discord among them. On the ground, broadcasts of the battle were shown worldwide, with real-time updates provided by media and military sources. Earth's population, united in hope and determination, watched as their defenders exploited every opportunity the wavering enemy presented. In a critical move, Jaithra proposed a daring plan to capture the Zorvaxian flagship that now hesitated at the edge of the conflict. A specially trained boarding party, consisting of both human and sympathetic Zorvaxian soldiers who had secretly contacted Jaithra, executed a precision strike. They boarded the flagship, confronting its crew not just with weapons, but with words. Join us, they urged, and help end this cycle of conquest and retaliation. We offer a path to peace. The capture of the flagship was a turning point. The image of the Zorvaxian flagship, under control of a joint force seeking peace, broadcast across the galaxy, inspired many more Zorvaxian commanders to cease their advance and reconsider their stance. The battle dwindled as more Zorvaxian ships withdrew or declared their neutrality, unwilling to continue a fight that no longer held meaning for them. Earth's forces, though ready to fight to the end, welcomed the sudden shift towards a ceasefire. In the aftermath, Earth emerged not merely victorious in battle, but also as a beacon of hope and diplomacy in the galaxy. The war had been averted, not just through strength of arms, but through courage, unity, and the willingness to reach out to one's enemy. General Shaithra, once a feared Zorvaxian commander, now stood before a gathering of Earth's leaders and newly arrived Zorvaxian peace delegates. Together, they drafted a treaty that ended the hostilities and laid the groundwork for a federation of planets united by mutual respect and shared ideals. As the treaty was signed, Shithra felt a profound sense of accomplishment. He had not only changed the course of his own life, but it also played a pivotal role in altering the destinies of two civilizations. Earth and the Zorvaxian Empire, once on the brink of destructive war, now looked forward to an era of peace and cooperation, with Shithra as a living bridge between their worlds.